This was brought to you by The Strange, The Bizarre, The Unusual, I Like It. On YouTube and Facebook. The Baconian theory of Shakespeare's authorship. It was believed that Francis Bacon was a member of a secret society called the Rosicrucian. There was also the Baconian theory of Shakespeare's authorship. This theory could hold weight because of the evidence presented about Shakespeare's life and death. Since the 1600s until now, it's been proclaimed that Shakespeare wrote the most elegant and grandest of writings of all time. But did he? During and after Shakespeare's time, some credible critics believed Shakespeare had never written his works. Furthermore, the theory claims Shakespeare never even existed. Termed as Baconians, they believed Shakespeare was no other than Francis Bacon, using Shakespeare as a pen name. Stating, the meaning of the name Shakespeare was the goddess, Athena, wearing her helmet of invisibility, while shaking her spear at the snake of ignorance below her feet using her helmet of invisibility to hide from view. Others were also suspected of being the author of the writings. Some have been thought to have written all of Shakespeare's writings themselves, while other claims believed that groups of writers were authors of the literature. These claims make a lot of sense if looked at honestly, and what is presented should bring into question who the true authorship of Shakespeare's writings were. Mark Twain stated, Shakespeare was credited for being the greatest writer of all time, and placed upon a pedestal, where he is now practically worshipped from. He has contributed so much to modern writing that our children are all sent to school and taught the writings of this great man. After Shakespeare's death though, he never gave one manuscript, book, or writings of any kind to his family in his will. Shakespeare never received a letter from one single person. Not even a fan? Not only did he never receive a letter, Shakespeare never sent one. A man with that much prestige, but not one letter sent, or received. Within his family, he was the only person who could read and write. Shakespearean supporters even admit that he only had a 7th grade education. Shakespeare, according to popular belief, was taken out of school in the 7th grade, because of religious differences between England and the Catholic Church. England expelled the Catholic Church, and formed the Church of England. In response the Catholic Church told its English followers, it was a sin for their children to go to any Orthodox schools. If Catholics allowed their children to attend, they were sinning against God, according to the Catholic Church. This caused a lot of Catholic children to go without an education during Shakespeare's childhood, and his father was a devout Catholic. After leaving school, Shakespeare learned the family trade of glove-making and helping his father with dealings in wool. There were no opportunities evident for Shakespeare concerning his writing skills, which he was credited for. He still appeared in London and began writing grand plays, with such knowledge of the world, and no records of Shakespeare ever traveling anywhere? No ledgers, manifests, or letters found saying, hey, guess who is on the ship with us? Shakespeare knew details about France and other countries that he had never traveled to. He wrote about law, and a man of his social class, during that period, knew nothing about law, and never had access to any of the information. Shakespeare could cite the law, though, and not one record was found stating that Shakespeare was a lawyer, or held a position involving the law. Another man was suspected as being Shakespeare, other than Francis Bacon. His name was Christopher Marlowe, and both men ran in the same circles. Marlowe was friends with Thomas Walsingham, who was the cousin of an English operative Francis Walsingham. 
Regarding espionage, Bacon was in France with his mentor Amias Paulette, while Marlowe was also in France with his employer and friend Thomas Walsingham. Francis Bacon learned about culture, law, politics, and was groomed into a gentleman and scholar, occasionally delivering diplomatic letters to England from France for Francis Walsingham. Returning from France, Christopher Marlowe was arrested and released shortly afterward, when he was killed by Ingram Frizer in a drunken night fight. Ingram was a servant of Thomas Walsingham, who was a courtier of Queen Elizabeth and related to Francis Walsingham, Queen Elizabeth's spymaster. The idea that Shakespeare and Bacon were the same people is hard to conceive. Putting both men's life works side by side, it isn't easy to see how one person could have done all of what these two men had achieved. These two men contributed too much to be the same person. If Shakespeare was a pen name, there had to be more writers involved. From that perspective, more suspects and avenues could be seen. When Shakespeare was popular, there were the university wits who always criticized Shakespeare, but were known to have collaborated with him. They starred in his plays and became partners in the theaters Shakespeare had purchased, and they performed in. Odd behavior, but speaking of literary societies, let's not forget that Bacon had a group of writers whom he worked and collaborated with too. This was brought to you by The Strange, The Bizarre, The Unusual, I Like It, on YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.